Hey everyone, welcome again to the Badass Podcast, the Batman the Animated Series show podcast where we talk about Batman the Animated Series. My name is Clay McCormick and with me is Sean Murphy. Sean, how are you doing? Good man, I'm excited to do not one, but two episodes where Batman has glowing red eyes. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, they actually... Um, it's weird to have those back to back to back, even though uh, <laughs> yeah. they, they they were separate. They're separate on the list uh, on the DVDs and they are separate in the broadcast. So it just happens to be a coincidence that we managed to get them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I love it, man. That might be the yeah. thing I want to draw if I want to skip to that already. <laughs> <laughs> but it's almost his, too, his, e- too easy, though. His sweet headgear. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, <laughs> Blind as a Bat and His Silicon Soul. So we're going to play the trailer for Blind as a Bat. No, is that what we do? No, that's the other show. I'm, I've got, no, we don't I've do got so many we, shows. Uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> first, I'm, I'm losing track of what, what I do on these things. So for people who don't know, Clay does like three different podcasts. And I recently found out he has like two or three different movie groups where he'll watch movies on Zoom. And I don't know how you ever get work done, man. It seems like a lot of your time is dedicated to criticizing other media. Yeah, well, you know, it keeps you sharp, you know, keeps you on the edge. Uh, Anyway, we'll take a quick break and then we'll be back with uh, Blind as a Bat. All right, Blind as a Bat, story by Mike Underwood and Len Wein. Wine? I'm not sure. Teleplay by Len Wein, directed by Dan Reba. And in this one, the penguin steals an experimental helicopter from an air show, causing an explosion that temporarily blinds Bruce Wayne. Batman knows he won't be able to wait until his vision returns to track the penguin down, and he must find a way to do so without the use of his eyes. Uh, what did you think of this one? Uh, I like the idea for the episode. Um, Batman's blind. He uses tech to try to fix the problem. Tech goes haywire halfway through. He has to resort to his training by blinding, you know, his uh, enemy in some way to even the odds, and then that's how he wins, proving that he doesn't need the technology in a way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't think the Penguin is a great choice for the bad guy. I feel like this could have been a really creepy, scary episode, um, but they just didn't go that way. And I don't sure. think it's like it's not a mistake. It's just not what I would have done, you know. Yeah, I um I really like this one. It's not like a I don't think it's an all-timer, but it's just I think it's just a really solid episodic um story. Right. Uh in that you've got Batman, he's presented with uh something he has to overcome, which is the blindness. You mm-hmm. like you said he's got the technology that helps fix it that breaks halfway through and he's got to, you know, yeah. uh figure out a way to 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 win without it. Um you know, I hadn't thought about using a different uh, villain because I thought this was actually a pretty good use of the penguin <laughs> because it, I I enjoyed that it wasn't just um, <clears throat> exclusively a, a bird based scheme he was going after <laughs> but that being said I do think he that's probably the weakest part of the episode well it is a bird based scheme and that he's only sealing the helicopter because it has a bird name right oh is that sure it's I guess called I the, the raven name. x111 yeah, I just I could I didn't hear the name because all I could think about was the how that's the middle section of the movie, the James Bond movie Goldeneye. Yeah, when exactly. They have, when they yeah. steal the uh, the helicopter, so that's the only thing I could think. Yeah, of. I mean that's so. What time? When did Goldeneye come out? Oh, ninety five. So this had to have been around the same time, maybe earlier. Uh, if they commissioned three seasons all at once, then this uh, script might have been written before Goldeneye. Not yeah, that that's Goldeneye the first was... hijacked helicopter scene ever. Right. Yeah. Goldeneye was 95. Yeah. Huh. Wonder what came first. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I uh, the the villain kind of takes a back seat to this. The uh, Penguin's plan isn't in, uh, super interesting. Yeah. Um. And while I did like what they did with with Batman's blindness, I kind of I kept kind of hoping they were gonna to push it a little bit further. Yeah. Um, because he does kind of he immediately come up with a solution, a tech solution. Yeah. Which then uh, eventually breaks, but it just didn't seem like there wasn't there wasn't a lot of uh, getting him over the hump. 
yeah. on his blinding initially, and I think it could probably could have benefited from that. Yeah, like I have small tweaks. Like Leslie helps him build this thing in two hours. Oh, uh, it, that was my favorite scene when she's <laughs> when she's using she's using a blowtorch on what I have to imagine is a very delicate piece of machinery. <laughs> yeah, she's a surgeon, not an uh, electrician or an engineer. Um, yeah. I would have thrown in a line that said, you know, because Bruce owns the company that designed the uh, the special helicopter that can see things in the dark. Why didn't he just say this is like a, a, he used the equipment that they used to build the helicopter to build this mask or something, or they, he downloaded the same file or whatever it is. You know, like he could have quickly within one line shown the viewers how Bruce is able to create this idea so quickly. Yeah. Eh, is it really that important though? I know, but it's just one line. It would have. Yeah. Would have. I know it's a kid show, but I don't know. I would have tweaked that because I think it's a pretty. It is. Fix. It does. It does seem kind of weird that <laughs> he immediately comes up with this miniaturized version of the airplane, yeah. the helicopter technology. I, uh, you know, the I sort of, I would like to have seen this done because I think him uh, having the red eyes, it would be great to have seen the eyes for the first time in like. A really scary way like the penguin mm-hmm. is a deep shit like you see the shadow of batman fall into an alley stand on a crate and penguin says something and then batman opens his eyes and they're red i think that would have been epic um mm-hmm. and then he's fighting these criminals i would have gone really creative and taken some um, liberties with black and white noir and sure. done a really interesting almost like how samurai jack used to experiment with with, with that kind of thing I could have really seen this, the whole him fighting blind or fighting with this mask on taken in a really interesting direction, but I don't know. I yeah, didn't, didn't you know, that. it's, I, I, I see what you're saying, but it's, I think the only reason it's, the, it's red is because it's linking it to the, the technology. Right. So I don't know if it's necessarily, I think in the next episode, yes, that, that the red eyes thing, it would be super well used uh, effectively in a scary situation but in this one it, it yeah. feels like it's not really that doesn't feel like the vibe that they're going for exactly with him having red eyes no you're right they, i would have gone the scary route but they didn't go scary they just went inconvenient you, right you, you right. see him stumbling around and he looks ridiculous and penguin's like what the hell is going on with this guy so yeah i guess in my version it would have felt more like the opening scene of the next episode where it's very scary that's why i said maybe penguin wouldn't be my first choice like imagine him being legit blind with this device and it's starting to flicker in and out and he's fighting bane or somebody sure. really dangerous like that would yeah. have been interesting for me to see but the penguin is so goofy that it loses any sense of danger for me yeah i would agree i i was thinking how they really could have done a lot more with um the technology failing or him having to fight with it flickering in and out yeah. just having just you know I, I probably my tweak probably would have been that I I, I would make the technology more uh, inaccurate mm-hmm. from the get go. Yeah. Um. So like the first time he puts it on and does his like multi backflip thing, yeah. like it shorts it shorts out mid mid backflip and he ends up <laughs> crashing into a wall or something and he's like, all right, well, yeah, this isn't perfect, but I'm gonna have to use it. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. That would have been cool. I mean, he accidentally. <laughs> ripped a, a dummy in half by the yeah. by the midsection instead of cutting the head off or whatever. <laughs> well, the thing the thing that's funny about it though is the he for some reason when he gets into the bat bat wing, he plugs into the 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 bat wing like right. he's plugging his iPod in or something. Yeah. And he's they establish earlier that he's got a Yeah. like he plugs it into his belt. So I'm not sure why he plugs it into the the bat wing other than to have it <laughs> Get it's caught like, and rip in half if, later. If you're, if you're going on a road trip and you have a, a little brick with you as a backup charger and you have your car, mm-hmm. you want to plug your phone into your car because your car's energy yeah. just comes from the That's battery. A good point. So yeah. you want to save sure. your brick power for later. <laughs> that would make sense. That's a good point. <laughs> but, I mean, I agree with your point. Honestly, I thought it would have been neat if they said, because uh, he's fighting a helicopter in a way. What if he goes, I'm going to use this technology, but it only works if I'm in the back plane because I need to plug into the bat plane, and I'm 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 going to do my best to beat this thing and not have to step foot outside of the bat plane, and then the bat plane crashes, and he's like, oh shit, and he quickly you know MacGyver's up a solution where he plugs the mask into his belt, but it's not mm-hmm. perfect, and then he has to continue the rest of the battle like that. That would have so, been another way. Yeah. Again, that's not the way that they went, <laughs> but I just had so many ideas of how I would have liked to have seen this. 
Yeah, because it's it's a great idea. You know, I I think these shows like this um, that are not serialized and they're more episodic uh, mm -hmm. work really well when you when it's kind of like okay what if this week batman x you know it's like well we've never explored this idea let's do this for a half an hour yeah um and this is a really good uh solid example of that where it's like well what if batman's blind all right well what right. How, what is that like and they i yeah i don't think they push it far enough um but i i do really like the idea right um, I will say they missed an opportunity to do firelit Batman at the end there. Yeah, well, I, I don't think it must be too hard to do or too expensive or something. They haven't done it for like two seasons. I think they just lack the creativity. They didn't have the foresight to always remember that that looked the best. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess not. Yeah, but uh, uh, they do. They do have. Um, they do have the finale inexplicably take place at like the terminator 2 steel mill yeah uh which yeah i guess it's a setup for the thing at the end where the uh with the steam yeah but exactly. it's uh it's it's a really interesting place to set the finale of this particular yeah episode. and like a river of molten steel as well which yeah. is <laughs> like what's what and by the way i think you would burn up immediately if you were standing in a tube filled with burning steel <laughs> oh totally and not to mention not to mention that catwalk they're on at the end yeah. just <laughs> extends out over the molten steel and does not have a safety barrier on the end of it well it had a really it's like a diving board that's true well you know what that catwalk is for actually um, so that the guy can come out in his hard hat and actually look down and make sure the steel looks okay. Yeah, you could do just, that. With, just kidding. With, Dude, <laughs> you would never send anybody in here. That's ridiculous. Why would you need to catwalk that closely? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, how did you feel about the that that thing they do at the end with the the steam truck? I wish that that scene had lasted longer. Honestly, um, yeah. Because once he finally figured out how to blind Penguin, because I, as I was. Because I couldn't remember the episode completely, and I'm thinking, all right, so Batman's going to, like, knock the lights out or something to even the odds. I forget what his trick is here. And then I realized, oh, he's going to go for the steam thing. But it's only, like, 30 seconds. He hits a thing, everything starts steaming when the water starts pouring on the molten steel, and then he jump kicks Penguin, and it's mm -hmm. over. Like, he could have had a whole right. scene where he was basically taking all of them apart, basically. But I think that they might have done that with him in that episode, Forgotten where he um, forgets who he is, and he's in the desert. Oh, and, sure, uh, yeah. There was a fight, I think, in a cave, uh, and he just made everything dark so he could have an advantage over everybody or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that know. seems to be a, a go-to for Batman is kill the lights. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, in general, I, was, yeah. I was expecting them to do uh, a, a bit more with it, too. I was expecting it to be like the end of Bloodsport when he gets blinded, and then he has to rely on all of his other senses to figure out how to beat the guy. yeah. Um, yeah, that would have been good too. Which is kind, it's kind of what it is, but it's not it's not really extended. It's just like a little beat at the end. But they I felt the whole episode was building towards that final scene of mm. how it's going it's all about taking down the penguin and he builds this device to help him take down the penguin and then the device starts to fail and he's still fighting the penguin and then he realizes he doesn't need the device at all. Like, you know, it's a trope, but it works for a reason. Right. And then you would really have a scene where he proved that he was more power. He he was, but Batman didn't need sight in a way. You right. Know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. It <laughs> he never, you know, it, it lacks that secondary level to it. I think. It, yeah. Exactly. It, it, it you never get the feeling that um, being blind is is it's it's it starts off like it's going to go that way because after he when he gets blinded initially yeah he he's he tells alfred he's like get me into the car really quick i have to get leslie no one can know that i'm blind <laughs> i'm blind i can't see <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah but then it's Conroy like, really it, tried to sell that line <laughs> yeah he's got he's got some he uh he definitely got to stretch some muscles in both of these episodes cause yeah he does a lot of, like yelling and stuff in the next one <laughs> yeah that's um, true the second one especially but yeah, he he never it, you never really get the sense that him being blind is that big of a hurdle for him to get over and mm -hmm. hasn't damaged him uh in a for lack of a better term a spiritual way at all. It's right. just yeah, my eyes don't work. Yeah. I've got this thing that that makes me able to see. Yeah. Nah, now this thing doesn't work. I got to figure it out. I feel like it wouldn't have taken that much to yeah. to we weave in a, a secondary level. Yeah, you're right. It's a very shallow plot. It's just uh, you know, 
Penguin steals the thing. Batman can't see for 36 hours exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Penguin uses the thing to destroy part of a bridge. Batman realizes it. I mean, that's it. It's, he takes down the bad guy. But th- there is no search for the, his soul. Like, man, I used to be so good. I used to be able to fight without all these tricks and gizmos. And what happened to me? I've gotten soft, you know. And here right, I am right. relying on technology. And then at the end, he realizes he doesn't need it because he's so awesome that he can figure out other ways to take him down, you know. Yeah. So that my, kind of my thing. Same, my same problem with uh, Dark Knight Rises, the third Nolan Batman movie. I was so hoping... That that was going to end with Batman <clears throat> realizing he couldn't outpunch Bane, so he had to like remember what it means to be Batman and beat mm-hmm. him as Batman, and then he just outpunches Bane and then <laughs> he gets run over by a motorcycle. I uh, yeah, I only saw that once, so I don't really remember it. Yeah, it's uh, it's like a third, maybe three. F- no, yeah, it's like a third of a good movie. There's a yeah. lot of good stuff in it, but it it doesn't hang together, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah, that's the problem with a lot of um, high concept stuff with Batman. It's like you want to try out these crazy ideas, but how do you ground it in a way that makes sense? Because there's so many logic problems too. Like in you know, Batman. I almost called it Batman Force Awakens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every movie I complain about, I'm just jamming into one title. Um, no, when uh, Gotham is basically quarantined and nobody can get on or off, I always have a hard time with stories like that because. It just doesn't seem realistic. Even in the comic book TMZ, which I, I liked, I can't imagine some place like New York legit being cut off from military intervention for more than a week, maybe, yeah. depending on what kind of villains were there. Or if there was something like an atomic bomb confiscated and there was a weird standoff at the perimeter. Or an escape from New York where they just decide New York is a pit. Let's just turn it into a prison. <laughs> mm, yes. But yeah, if you're going to like quarantine an entire city and make it logical, you really got to explain how the hell cops aren't just, or tanks just aren't driving over the bridges and getting in right away. I mean, give me a break, you know? Well, I mean, they the first thing, well, not that we don't, we're not here to talk about Dark Knight Rises, but the first thing they do is blow up the bridges. So there's no way to, for anybody to get in. But okay, um, helicopters, you know, uh, high altitude drops, Navy SEAL teams, boats. I mean, yeah, come on, holding man. they're the whole place hostage with a nuclear bomb. That was what the plot was? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll have to yeah. watch it again. So, well, if I, I might withdraw everything <laughs> I just said, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I think that stuff matters to a point. You know, yeah. I think if you start overthinking all of those logic beats, unless, unless, it's, unless it's creating active, you know, plot holes in your story, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't think it's, you have to worry about it too much. Right. Because, um, you know, cool. it's, it's, that's not the important stuff. So, can we talk about the penguin for a second? Sure. Uh, I uh, I don't even know why I was thinking about penguin the other day, but I was trying to think of if I ever did a story and I used the penguin as mm-hmm. the epic, you know, antagonist. What would I do? For mm-hmm. example, any of these comics, a lot of comics, they need a big, um, uh, like a, a an event for Batman, for example. They need somebody serious. Like, if you want an event villain, you're going to need Bane. You're going to need Joker. You don't sure. really ever see a big, serious v- event with the Riddler or with Penguin or these kind of, you know, dopey villains that kind of exist in the villain, the rogues gallery, you know? Yeah, it definitely. It definitely does happen less. I know yeah. uh, the last handful of years, by handful, I mean like 10, the Riddler has been part of a couple like har- high profile stories. But yeah, uh, yeah. But generally, he's not the first one on the list, no. And, and Penguin, even less so. Yeah. And I, I, so for this new book that I'm writing, um, uh, I created this new villain and, uh, I, I won't tell you exactly what the villain is, but it is a villain that can only exist in a specific story where there is someone murdering golden age Hollywood super movie stars. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I feel like I'm in the exact same spot. The writers were in the sixties where they need a weird villain of the week. And mm-hmm. they come up with some really cool ideas, like, you know, with the Penguin and the Riddler, those are some interesting ideas, especially, I think the Riddler has more to him that you could do with, play with. The, the Riddler yeah, is such a, like, like okay, this guy does bird-related crimes? Yeah, yeah, that's all we need, <laughs> whatever. Adam West Adam West says he likes it, let's just put it in, who cares, you know? 
So I'm creating this villain, and I, I like the villain. I, I like the look of her, and I think that this is a cool idea, but I don't know how the hell she's supposed to exist in any story outside of one that specifically involves Golden Age Hollywood murders. <laughs> you know? You have you have kind of written yourself into a corner there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you know, it probably feels I, like that I, to me. If <laughs> this is your, if this is your uh, backdoor way of saying you're going to pitch a gray ghost series, I think that would probably go over. Oh well, yeah, I mean, that's this, the right, the, the right story. Time. I'd be, it would be criminal if I didn't include the gray ghost in the story. Uh, yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> well, you know, I think the funny thing about about stuff like that, like you, uh, we talked, we talked about something similar with Mister Freeze, where uh, he he's a little bit more flexible. Mm-hmm. Um. Because he's his look and everything is so great, but after we watched Heart of Ice, I remember we were both kind of like, I don't really know how you can have this version of Mister Freeze just out there doing crimes, mm-hmm. because he's the story is so specific and he has like this endpoint mm-hmm. built into him that you know his whole thing is he's trying to steal stuff to s- save his wife, and once that's over, mm-hmm. he either stops doing what he's doing or he just you know they kind of forget about that and he just turns into a, another villain. Yeah. And with, uh, I think the penguin, I think you've got, I, I think what, what it comes down to with those kind of villains is you have to decide, um, it, if, if they're a gimmick based villain like that, like the penguin where, uh, you know, it's all bird stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you either double down on it or you, think about the character outside of that shtick like on i didn't watch gotham Mm -hmm. uh the the show very much Mm -hmm. but um i had seen i had been seeing some of the stuff they were doing with the penguin on that show and they turned him into a pretty interesting uh complex character Mm -hmm. where um the name came from i think it came from i think it was given to he, he was like a low level mob guy or something and they they it that name was given to him because he was had a, a weird walk because of a birth defect or he was mm. you know injured or something yeah. and he had a, a beaky nose and stuff and so it became less of a uh 50s style gimmick as much as a moniker placed on him that he then had to fight his way out from underneath sort of right at least i think i i think that's what the show was about <laughs> yeah but yeah. it's you know, know that's the kind it. of that's the kind of thing is it's 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 easy to just do gimmick related stuff with these characters. And honestly, I feel like it's kind of while you do end up getting written into corners sometimes, I do feel like it is a little bit of a crutch mm-hmm. because it's like, well, what are we gonna do? Uh, let's use the penguin. Christ, what do we do with the penguin? Yeah. I don't know. Uh have him rob a zoo or something and get a <laughs> bunch he's he's trying to get all the birds in Gotham City. It's like, sure. That's Sounds what it, that's Let's that's what it that. feels like a lot of times with these yeah. one note villains. It's all right, uh we need a we had a bird. Uh, birds are always fun. Who doesn't want to animate a bird? Yeah, a big bird that can scratch Batman. Hey, hey, there you go. Or um I mean honestly, the penguin worked really well for me in that episode where there were children in a basement and Batman was unconscious. Oh, and sure, yeah. Penguin could be really scary if you're a kids, but if you're Batman, he's really not that scary. Yeah, when it comes down to uh when it comes down to Batman on an equal footing in a fist fight with the Penguin, I'm probably putting my money on Batman. Yeah. Um, unless, you know, unless the Penguin outthinks him somehow. But uh, have, have we gotten to the episode where um, Penguin tries to go straight and he's dating uh, Bruce's yes. friend? Yeah, yeah, we did that one last season. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, at the end, it's very operatic. Um, I like that episode a lot. Like, I think Penguin works best when he is feigning an interest in becoming somewhat legit and pretending right. that he's not a criminal. And that's actually why he worked really well in Batman Returns. Right, um, yeah. Like, you could see very clearly that this disgusting monster was eventually going to end up realizing, like, he can't just be mayor of Gotham. Eventually he's going to get found out, and this all has to blow up in his face somehow, you know. But he sort of entertained the idea that he could run for, for office for a long time, and it held up for most of the plot. And even in season four of this uh, this animated series, he goes back to like owning the Iceberg Lounge. So he's like a legit right. businessman who is obviously corrupt on the side. Like Penguin works very well in both of those cases, which they're basically the same. But in most of the animated series in season one, two, and three, 
he's just the bird villain criminal of the week with right. nothing more to him, you know? And I think that's why I have such a hard time getting into him. Yeah, and I, I uh all that stuff is is kind of what I'm what I'm talking about when I say like you know moving outside of the gimmick and like kind of thinking around it a little bit, right? Because yeah, he's he is much more interesting as this when you put him into this context of oh he's this high society guy yeah who looks and acts this way so he's shunned by society which is the it's the the place he wants to be more than anything else so that instantly gives him like a, an interesting char- character character mm-hmm. trait other than. Uh, look at how weird it is that he eats fish with his hands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, man. But yeah, he he. Uh, it seems like he has become more of the club owner character than anything else in the last handful of years. I I see him more. Yeah. Referenced as like he's sort of he's not he's he's like more of a he's like one level up from like Rupert Thorne kind of. Yeah, I was thinking that uh, that too. Yeah. I was thinking about uh, Roland Daggett type of guy right right yeah um, but yeah it's interesting to see how they they do change these characters or or evolve them to keep yeah. them uh viable i mean wasn't he back in the adam west show wasn't he the basically the uh iceberg lounge type ca- owner who had a criminal streak was he somewhat uh, legit even back then and like maybe I, that is the starting point for penguin but you and i grew up in an age where it was batman returns and this so maybe we lost track yeah. of who penguin's supposed to be I honestly don't know. I couldn't tell you anything about the characters on the Adam West show other than essentially who they are and what their gimmick was because I don't know if they ever really got yeah. into them. <laughs> yeah. I'd love they to know. They didn't spend a lot of time like deconstructing the Joker on the Batman 66. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. Um, is there a thing that you would like to draw in this episode? Um, I the, This is a tough one. Why don't you go first? Uh... I'd like to take a stab at Batman fighting with his um, eyes flicking on and off Yeah. in a comic book page. I think you could have some interesting solutions to that storytelling problem. Um, but again, I would try to make it a bit more scary. Uh, I'd definitely turn the lights down in the whole scene, for one thing. Like, this whole episode was very well lit. And uh, mm. I again, I would take it to slightly darker and scarier, uh, personally. But I'd have to change a lot of the other rest rest of the episode to do that, you know. Right, right. Um, but yeah, yeah uh, I, Batman with red eyes is an obvious one too. Yeah, I think I'm probably in the same area of of handling handling Batman not being able to see well would yeah. be would be interesting to me. Um, you, you know, know what so, does that what does that look like, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's interesting. Um, if you, I almost said the steam scene i would draw him fighting in steam but when i draw someone working in shadows you're basically blending the figure into black so you're Mm -hmm. thinking of like how do i blend the shadow of his face his arm his chest whatever how do i make him fade into the 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 ink now drawing him in steam should be the same thought in reverse how do i blend him into the white but it's harder because i don't make white marks i make black marks so it's easy to draw a scene where you're having a character consumed by more and more black marks when right, you're trying right. to let like white you have to just allow white to exist because your pay your paper is already white mm-hmm. um so it would be a challenge what i might do is actually try my fingerprint technique but dipping it in white paint and seeing if i can kind of come up with some textures in reverse if that makes sense you know what you want to use i use these all the time and they're friggin' great um makeup removal sponges those little wedge-shaped sponges oh yeah if you uh, if you dip those in like some white gouache or like white acrylic paint or something and take yeah. a little bit of the, the 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 take a little bit of it off before you do it and then you yeah. kind of dab it like your fingerprint right it makes these really cool textures um, oh, interesting that are really great for like blowing out a highlight or uh, yeah you know doing some sort of uh, steam or, or fog type stuff hmm. uh, Sin- Sinkevich uses them all the time like all of my tricks I learned <laughs> it by watching him do it at a convention once. Okay, huh, gouache, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah, I might try that. But yeah, it is It is different. It is It is uh, interesting when you have to kind of flip things with your brain that way. Yeah. You know, because... I uh, think there was a uh, Batman Black and White Volume 3 had a short story with the Riddler drawn by J.P. John Paul Leon. Mm-hmm. And I believe, uh, and I haven't seen the original art, but it looks like he started out with black and just added white 
to everything. Oh, cool. And even left like the outlines of characters, like what would normally be a quick brushstroke with black. <clears throat> he mm-hmm. had to build in the white to make it look like, you know what I mean? Sure. To, to leave the outline. Or, yeah. So it's, I mean, I wouldn't want to do a whole book like that, but it was definitely a great attempt um, with eight, eight pages. I think it was. But uh, again, maybe, I mean, if that's not how he did it, then I'm going to be really embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like it's a different approach than what he normally does. And knowing what I, knowing him, I, I'll bet you that he, he's more interested in like experimentation, even if mm. it takes longer, you know, like he's that type of guy. Yeah. Well, until he goes on the record, just keep saying that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, what would you rate this episode? Uh, if I'm generous, I'd say a three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. I would say three. I think it's more or less structurally pretty solid. Um, It doesn't do everything it could do with the concept. But uh, there was actually one thing at the beginning that I thought was really interesting that I I wasn't expecting them to follow up on. But it was it was kind of uh, it it was it was a crumb of a a really interesting plot thing was was when they're doing the um, the test flight for the helicopter. Bruce Wayne is talking to the uh, the woman who's like running the test or something. Yeah, yeah. And he he voices his reticence to start <laughs> making weapons, right? Like military weapons. And I was like, oh man, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I don't but, think that's going to come up again, but that's a pre- that's that's kind so of fun. In the uh, Batman Superman World's Finest cartoon, he it's the exact same problem. He mm-hmm. and Lex are working on something together, and Lex militarizes it, and Bruce Wayne's pissed off. Yeah. So they actually revisit this exact point. And they actually do it better. But I like that it's first introduced right here, honestly. Yeah, it's just kind of a throwaway line, but it is a it is something cuz it is one of those things where it's like if you had to think of what Wayne Enterprises does, mm-hmm. what would you say they do? Cuz I don't even know. <laughs> they make money, Clay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you know, like, do they are they a manufacturing company? Are they right? Well, there's Wayne you know, Enterprises Technologies. Then, you know, so, well, the boring answer is, I'll bet you, it's just Wayne Enterprises. That's um, Bruce Wayne's corporation. So mm-hmm. that's where the money goes, and he pays himself a salary out of that. Underneath Wayne Enterprises, you have Wayne Tech. You could have Wayne Motors. You could have Wayne this, Wayne Music, whatever you wanted. Um, they've, so they've I'll bet never, you, they've sorry. never delved into Wayne Music. I wish they would. Do that. <laughs> Well, they did in, uh, in the Batman Lego movie when he starts singing his own theme song. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> can you, in, in volume three of, of White Knight, can you have somebody uh, try to rob Wayne music? It's like Death Row Records, but somehow with a Bruce Wayne twist. <laughs> like The Pied Piper has to get all of his uh, uh, publishing <laughs> publishing rights back. <laughs> On uh, Wayne Records, we don't allow any lyrics about guns whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a rule yeah um <laughs> yeah. this is also an episode i was gonna say a uh, great time to call robin which they don't do you know if batman goes blind oh, I, the first thing i would do is can you call dick and have him come over and <laughs> help me out a little bit yeah um one thing that bugged me about this when i was a kid was uh when he wears the helmet by itself it seems very bulky and when he pulls yeah. the tight leather it just goes away but mm-hmm. i think it, it looks good go because i like the red eyes <laughs> yeah would you would you have preferred it for the rest of the episode he has this like the <laughs> big mushroom head at the end <laughs> with his mask on or if they had just made it uh goggles or something i mean the yeah thing's ridiculous I, don't know anyway. it, I don't know why it needs to be a full yeah. skull cap thing yeah. you know i'm also, surprised why doesn't his cowl have a metal skull protectant thing in it anyway? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised if they did it now, it would probably just be contact lenses. Honestly. Yeah. I'm surprised right. they didn't just do contact lenses. I guess you or, can't blow torch contact lenses. Now Batman would just be a drone, and Bat Bruce Wayne would be sitting in the cave, getting fat, just controlling these things digitally. Hey, man, that's what they did in Kingdom Come. That's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, oh man! But yeah, I was, <laughs> I was trying to make a pathetic analogy here, and you made me realize that it was done, and it was actually pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> anyway, I think that's going to do it for blind as a bat. Let's take yeah. a quick. Oh, break. actually, one more thing. Oh, uh, I noticed sure. the um, the pilot of the helicopter crew. It looks like they were uh, trying to draw some of the cast from that movie Catch Twenty Two. Oh really? 
Well, I, I don't know. Some old timey movie. Those the way that they drew those characters, it was way too uh, unique to just to be made up. It wasn't just like stand in guy number one, two, and three. I bet you huh. that there's someone from some movie somewhere that I'm. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. I'll have to go back and, and check that out again. Because yeah. I remember one of the. I think it was one of the movies. Um, one of the villains was clearly based off of um, the wild. The wild. Uh, what's his name? The, um. Fuck. Who's in The Godfather? Marlon, Bra- Marlon Brando. The yeah, wild Marlon Brando in The Wild Bunch or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that that, that, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, they 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 tuck all that stuff in there all the time. One of yeah. the the best things for me about growing up was watching the Simpsons again and actually getting like <laughs> half the jokes that they oh, make. Oh, Rosebud. Huh. Yeah. yeah. that makes a lot more sense. There's a lot there's a there's a for for a kid show uh <laughs> In the 90s, there was a lot of references to movies from the 40s on that show. <laughs> yeah, it was a deep dives. Like a lot of film nerds got involved with with uh, the Simpsons and were like, "Hey, man, you know, for their get, letting a, us get away with a lot of shit here, let's throw in some, you know, Casablanca references." Yeah, why not? What the hell? <laughs> anyway, that's that'll do it for Blind as a Bat. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be back with his Silicon Soul. <laughs> Okay, his Silicon Soul, written by Marty Eisenberg and Robert N. Skier, directed by Boyd Kirkland. And in this one, when a Batman impersonator appears in Gotham City, <laughs> that just sounds like it's a guy of like a vaudeville troupe. But that's not exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. When a when a Batman, imp- it's like the guy standing in front of like the Chinese theater in L.A. Uh, when a Batman impersonator appears in Gotham City, the real Batman deduces that Carl Rossum is somehow involved and confronts the inventor. The other Batman, a duplicate, then shows up and a battle between the two takes place. After the duplicate escapes, it begins its campaign to recreate Hard and really burying the lead on the Hard Act thing here. Recreate Hard Act's goals of a robotic society. Uh, note: This is interesting. I don't know if this is true. The anime series The Big O was partially inspired by this episode. I am not aware of that show. That huh. series. I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. Yeah, so I um, can't comment on that. Did you ever? I'm going to get us off topic right away here. Did you ever Let's see the documentary it. of uh, the Hollywood? Um, superheroes who watch Hollywood Boulevard and like the story behind some of these people. I don't think so. And there's this guy who is Superman and I think he had some emotional issues, we'll say. Mm -hmm. And he was convinced that he might actually for real be uh, the lost son of Christopher Reeves. Oh, because he even thinks he, he looks like him. Um, this guy is getting interviewed like he goes to his apartment. It's like not 110 degrees out in the sun and he's taking photos of people in, in L.A. So he goes home to his really scary, small, tiny, sad apartment and mm-hmm. uh, jumps in the shower in his Superman costume, soaks himself and goes back out. And like, I can't imagine how much he must reek by the end of the day. I mean, some of those performers are, I think, maybe a few steps up from homeless. Um, yeah, and I'm not making fun of them or sh- sh- shading, yeah, uh, throwing any shade at them whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I was really feel awful when you get to the end of this documentary and you this guy has convinced himself that he is the lost son of Christopher Reeve, that's, and then they bring in like a professional and they're like, "No, we did a DNA test. He knows he's not. He's just disturbed or something like that." That's essentially the plot of the Joker movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) Because I was going to say, I mean, you know, there's it is really unfortunate that there are people who are their mental state or 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 what other other external pressures get you into this mindset that, well, obviously, this can't be my life. There must be something else that I am. I deserve or that is another place I should be in. Yeah. Which is exactly what the plot of the Joker right. movie is, and, now and I it's think a real it, thing that happens. That was the best live action superhero movie, Superman movie I've seen. Oh yeah, since the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to your take on the character. <laughs> yeah, and this poor guy. I, I I hope he's still doing it, or he's found help, or whatever. But mm. it's, I remember it being really heartbreaking because uh, the audience knows the truth before he does. But he's still yeah. going out there. And even when he's confronted with the facts, he decides to believe that it's not true. And he sure. still likes to think that he is, you know, because it gives him meaning. And he really kind of does look like 
Christopher Reeves in a mentally disturbed, homeless kind of way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's too bad. <laughs> it sounds like I'm making fun of homeless people, and I swear I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, um, it is It is a really a really sad situation to be in, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but to get us back on track, uh, man, mm. I, I love this episode. I love the opening when Batman just pops out pops out of a shipping crate and starts yes. beating those two guys. And uh, they really don't waste any time revealing that he's a cyborg. Right. Um, and I thought the rollout between the first three scenes was really good, really disturbing, really unique, uh, especially when he goes to Alfred. He's like, Alfred, what's yeah. wrong with me? And I felt like the delivery of those lines was much better from, I guess, all the actors involved in the show. Like a lot of the stuff in the previous episode didn't quite land for me. Like when Bruce mm. is trying to sincerely say he can't see anymore, that just came off as funny. But the delivery <laughs> here was perfect. Yeah, it's a, it's a really... The, the first like 10 minutes of the show are, are, are really trippy uh, yeah. and intense for, for a kid's show because that they do play that um, uh, until they bust him open, mm-hmm. you don't know what the hell's going on. And then after they bust him open and he starts reacting and f- kind of freaking out that way and he goes yeah. to, the, uh, uh, to, to Wayne Manor and kind of Frankenstein's Alfred and yeah knocks him out it is it's pretty scary and it's it's, yeah they play him they play him not as a uh a robot who thinks has the memories of bruce wayne they play Mm -hmm. him as bruce wayne who thinks he has been somehow turned into a robot yeah and which is really freaky and he's yeah and he's terrified um what would be where i think they well that's so that's sort of like act one act two is when uh, this robot uh, realizes that he's a creation of Hardak and he mm. gets uploaded with new information and he gets fixed up. And what that does is he changes his character into traditional evil robot, basically. Right, and uh, right. his so he loses all of the new one. Like he no longer thinks of himself as Bruce Wayne. He thinks of himself as sort of having to do the deed of, of Hardak. Um, and by the end of the episode, the way that Batman beats him is by convincing him, no, you still have the morality of Bruce Wayne. Even if you're pretending that you don't, you know, you're clearly connecting to something and you're not just going to kill me because that's not what Batman does, which right, I thought was right. was really great. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, it, it hits a lot of it's like a, a kid's TV version of uh, the same sort of things they bring up in Robocop a little bit uh-huh. where it's, you know, Robocop is not Alex Murphy. He's a robot who has the memories of Alex Murphy. But how where does one yeah. end and the other begin? Yeah. And, you know, ult- ultimately. What is this new thing that's been created, and it, is it you know the the do, eth, do ethics human ethics supersede his programming? Right, that kind of stuff. It's it's really interesting stuff to yeah. be throwing around in a in a cartoon. Totally, it's it's got T two stuff. Not only with like the half ripped off cyborg face at the end, which was very nineties, which was mm. awesome, um, but also like a microchip that inserts into his head that completes yes, the yeah. record of his programming to the the red POV type stuff they did and of course they threw in a lot of blade runner in there to boot oh definitely yeah yeah the, the duplicants um yeah. using jf sebastian as the guy who was the creator of hard act and all that yeah. kind of stuff i you know i i remembered i was trying to think back to the first hard act two-parter <laughs> mm-hmm. as i was watching this i guess i could have listened to our episode but i i didn't um i don't think i liked the hard act two part of that much or like it kind of didn't really hit yeah. where i was hoping it would and i think this one is a big improvement because yeah. you're you're they get they don't have to deal with the kind of um mystery nature of what's going on and like the specifics of the technology they can just get into the weird mm-hmm. uh you know duplicate stuff yeah. and some of the more morality of it and it, it's i think it's a much stronger episode yeah and when i was when i watched the original um, the first three, sorry, the first two Hardak episodes, I always jam, jam all three of these together. So I remember yeah. when we watched those two, I'm like, wait, when does when does the Batman robot appear? Because I really like that scene. And that's why mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, shit. So I remember those two episodes weren't as good as I remembered, but I was actually thinking about this one. Um, I think uh, when I was a kid, I might have seen this episode very early on because I was mm-hmm. watching the you know, after school type thing. So I was getting them out of order. And this was the first time I realized, oh, Batman doesn't kill. And if he ever did kill, it would destroy him because that's just not what he does. Got it. 
and I obviously never forgot that. And when, you know, uh, Zack Snyder decided, now nah, Batman has guns and he kills. <laughs> for thinking mm-hmm. like, but okay, <laughs> I thought that was part of the Bible of Batman. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, technically, bru- it depends on, yes, it, it is. But, uh, you know, some some more some people play more fast and loose with it than others. Right. I mean, technically, uh, Michael Keaton's Batman kills at least two people in that movie. Yeah. you. F- I sort of forget, like, the quick... There's a video on YouTube where it shows you, like, the dozens of yeah. times Batman is killed. But for some reason, yeah. it just didn't really sink in with me. But when well, you no, design it's... a Batmobile with guns on the yes. turret at all times... And yeah, I know that the 89 had guns too, but it was only for blasting doors, obviously. Yeah, it's the bombs on the hubcaps that he blows people up with. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. But no, it's, it's, yeah, I think it's, I, I, people seem to, it seems to be hip to sort of like hand wave that element of Batman. The mm-hmm. uh, Batman doesn't kill, but it really does kind of set him apart that he has such a hard line to mm-hmm. that stuff that it is so ingrained in his character and right. i feel like if you take that away from him he's just like you know mm-hmm. he's just a, 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 a he's just a shadow hawk you know right. no disrespect <laughs> to shadow hawk but no, uh, full disrespect to sure. shadow hawk yeah hawk. but you know what i mean like it's like that's that's where those characters came from it's like yeah. what if it was batman but he had you know bladed knuckles and he kills people did like, he okay sure in the chris nolan did he kill anybody uh no well nope no he doesn't um because in the at the end of the first one uh liam neeson they have that exchange where uh Mm. liam neeson says it's against your rule to kill me and he says yeah it is but it doesn't mean i have to save you right and then the second one the second one is all about the joker trying to push him to kill him and he does it that's why those films work so well for me is i think chris nolan knew that and was very i mean it wasn't the point of the movie it certainly was a subplot of course and when it came yeah. up but yeah well, that's, that's what that's what bums me out about the third one yeah is that a lot of that interesting character stuff kind of gets pushed <clears throat> to the side so you've got in the in the previous two movies you've got batman beating these villains by mm-hmm. doubling down essentially on what makes him batman instead right. of like rising to their or bringing them down to their level as the joker would say yeah um you know i gotta rewatch the third that one, one Go, sorry, yeah, in the ahead. third one, he just you know, he just punches harder. And yeah, it's, it's I, not as it's not. I as haven't fun. seen the third one enough to give you a good reason why I didn't like it as much. I, I would assume I'm probably going to agree with you because usually I, we pretty much line up on Batman for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I haven't. I just didn't wasn't interested by it. It just seemed like there was way too much going on that you couldn't explain away, and I just felt like it was. I don't know. It kind of lost yeah. track for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which sucks because I loved what he did with the first two, and uh, I can't help but believe there has to be some really great stuff that he did. Like Chris Nolan does not do boring; he does not do no. bad, inventive. Like there's always it's no, always worth seeing his shit, you know. There's definitely interesting stuff in that movie. It's just I think on the yeah. on those secondary levels, it doesn't quite hang together as well as the first two did. Right. I mean, the, like uh, Zack Snyder missing. <laughs> missing the point of a movie is a way different movie than Chris Nolan missing it. Cause even when Chris misses, he still hits a single or whatever, you know? Right. Right. I don't know. I'm not good with it. I should stick to car analogies. I'm much more better. I'm much better at that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, uh, spark plugs when they fire and you know, <laughs> yeah, that's got right. eight cylinders and sometimes thing. Chris Nolan's got eight cylinders and sometimes everybody else says six. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Um, I was gonna say uh, I really loved when Alfred suddenly realized that uh, Batman was a robot, and he, he immediately starts hitting buttons that hit, turns into gas, and he's got a yes. gas mask on. <laughs> like he's clearly yes. prepared for Bruce to turn on him at some point. <laughs> that was that was a very Terminator Two thing with him yeah. walking through the gas and then pulling off Alfred's yeah. gas mask. Yeah. Yeah. And I like um, when he did it, Batman was like, sorry, old friend, but I need answers and I don't need you to be conscious for them. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the stuff that I, I really, really interests me yeah. is that, you know, the, the the idea is that this robot character thinks it's Bruce Wayne, but that's not something Bruce Wayne would probably do. You know, like so some of yeah. the the more uh, hard edge stuff. Yeah. of the robot is seeping out through the the Bruce Wayne yeah. programming, you know? Yeah. Right after that, uh, 
or I don't know which. See, that's the thing is the first few scenes, you kind of lose track which Batman is the real Batman, and you wonder mm-hmm. if you're being that's fooled why, or not. That's and why for, they blow up his chest. <laughs> you no, know, that too, yeah. <laughs> um, but at one point, I think it's the real Bruce Wayne, goes to his computer, and he's like, computer, look up uh, duplicate. And he gives it a very vague, like, look up duplicate. And if I yelled that at my computer, it would just read me Wikipedia of duplicate. But this computer's like, <laughs> oh, man, there's, like, six people that were robots, and the duplicates were, like, the name of them. Like, the well, computer knew way too much. If you want to get technical about it, th- it that is still true. But it's duplicant, <laughs> C-A-N-T, oh. like replicant. Oh, sorry. For, yeah. I'm going to blame uh, that on my bad hearing. That's fine. But still, it is <laughs> it is funny that he's like, Compu- uh, computer, look up duplicate. And then it's like... I will read you the synopsis of the last episode featuring Hardak. Computer, solve crime for me. Yeah. Oh, Computer, man, oh, do man. the work. My my favorite part of that episode was during that flashback when they are um when it's explaining how it created the double of Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And then they like put him away in a box and then it ended up in like the Raiders of the Lost Ark room. Because I was thinking I was thinking to myself, the cleanup crew that's like doing inventory on the hard axe system, you know, the heart, the system that created human duplicates yeah. didn't bother to open the human sized box right. that was just in the corner before they put <laughs> it in the shelves. And you've so got a multi, just, you know, paper bil- going bad. you've got a multi-billion piece dollar piece of equipment that is way more advanced than anything we've ever seen. And you put yeah. it in a pine box. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe that's why they didn't open it. Clearly, nothing in a pine box. It's got to be a dead body. No one wants to open that. Yeah, it said it didn't say fragile on the side. It didn't say anything like that. Um, um, so I'm ahead. also going to, I don't know, I do have a hearing problem for the viewers who don't know. I am half deaf, so I do miss things about. So the is it Carl Rossum? Is that his name? His name is, uh, yes, Carl Carl Rossum. Rossum. His name around the office, his nickname had better been Awesome Carl. <laughs> that's all i could think of <laughs> i i hope if 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 i were to do a, a hard act book i would make sure all the robots refer to him as awesome carl and that's like that's the that's the tip off that batman gets that like gordon has been replaced by a robot because he's like they're in the in G- gcpd and he's like yeah i don't know we've sent guys over to awesome carl Carl Rossum's house, and then it's like, "What did no, you, you just said call awesome him?" Carl, you're a robot. I, I didn't. I did. I didn't say awesome, Carl. No, I did not. Yeah, I also uh, when uh, Hardak Batman um, realizes he's a robot and starts talking to Hardak, he stops using contractions, just like Data. Oh, cool. Yeah, I didn't notice that. That's cool. And I also noticed that awesome Carl, as a farmer, <laughs> he basically wants to be Picard in the new series. He's basically in a field with robots planting things and trying to yeah. get past his old life or whatever. Yeah, except he wants to be there, though. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, was it clear whether Picard wanted to be there or not? I forget what that no, happened. No, that was kind of the problem with the show. Okay, uh, we don't have to go into that that way. No, no. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I... Uh, I th- how did you feel about the um, when, they, when they do that sort of like switcheroo where Hardak, the Hardak Batman is looking up all the info about the duplicates and stuff, and then mm-hmm. they cut to Batman showing up at Rossum's place, and they uh, it takes a couple seconds for you to realize it's the real Batman, right? You know, uh, I, yeah. it was. I I thought it might have been a little too subtle for its own good, and it might have hmm. been a little confusing. But well, even in the beginning, when uh, Gordon finds these people hung up on a lamppost, Batman's there, but there was a scene break. So in theory, mm. the robot could have fixed his tights or something i don't know like it's easy to explain away that's why i was sort of felt like it, the episode was having me guess at which batman sure. was real now it sure. is a kid's show so yeah the obvious the one with the red eyes and the electronics is obviously the the, the robot but yeah yeah i thought yeah. that was cool yeah i uh the other thing i was thinking that was kind of interesting was like man i guess hardak doesn't really care that who Batman is because he knows everything about Batman and yeah. made him like a screen accurate Batman suit. And it's not even yeah. like, it's not even the fact that Batman is Bruce Wayne is not even like considered. That should have been the way he would have done this. If he just made a subtle Bruce Wayne to take over everything, he could have probably done a lot more damage that way. Um, yeah. I th- I didn't think he knew Batman's identity because when hard act Batman takes off his mask, 
all he has is like a fleshy chin. And I'm like, oh, okay. So he didn't actually know who Bruce Wayne was. He just designed Batman with the correct face. Uh, sorry, with the, with the correct mouth and chin. But then in the flashback, you see that he actually did design the hard act Batman to be Bruce Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Which begs the question how he knew that in the first place. And they say right, that he yeah. knows everything that's in Batman's computer. So I assume Batman's computer knows I, that it's Bruce Wayne, which makes sense. I, <laughs> I also, I couldn't remember if there was something like, uh, um, was there a thing in the first episode that's like uh, the bit from Batman Forever where it's like taking brain waves from people or something? So it's like, you know you know what I mean? Oh. Uh, like, like one of those things where... Uh, I don't think so. I think it's more analog than that. Yeah. Yeah, I guess not. Um, there's another episode that takes that that's very similar to Batman Forever. I guess it's not that one. But yeah, because yeah. I was thinking like, well, that's one way it could work. Is if Hardak was like the information it was pulling down was was stuff taken directly from the people it was copying. Right. Um. But yeah, yeah whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um. Can we talk about how? In the 90s, there was a huge surge of imagery that was basically T2 cyborg ripped faces everywhere. Sure. In sure. comics, too. They had the uh, Superman. Cyborg Superman, yeah. Yeah, one of the Supermen was like basically T- Terminator, and uh, even the comic called Death's Head, um, which yeah. I don't know if you remember. I didn't read it, but there was like, you saw that shit everywhere, and it basically started with T2, right? Or T1, maybe. Yeah, I think it was a Terminator. At least the probably the first one. Yeah, bled bled over into popular culture, and T two definitely cemented it. And wasn't one of the Supermen actually called the Terminator? Uh, no, that was the ex the ex Terminator. I think no, uh, Eradicator. Eradicator. Still, yeah. come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was a pre existing character. That character oh. had had existed for a while. Yeah. Okay, I did. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, but I no, I mean. There's a, there's a lot of that stuff that does that was bleeding over into that yeah. time period as well. You know, my um, the, honestly for me the only critique I have on this episode is I kind of wanted to dive into some of this these Philip K. Dick themes more. Sure, yeah. Um, it, it sort of it's great. It's a kids show. I get it. But I as an adult would love to. See, this is like a mishmash of like Philip K. Dick 101. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I would really like to see an episode where um, Bruce the robot is coming to terms with the fact that he's not real and he's wondering what the fuck even happened and he's freaking out you mm-hmm. know to him losing his consciousness and him the decision to just well i am now taking over as batman so i'm going to eliminate batman and then to the fight scene at the end where he has this change of heart like hard act designed him too well is what bruce wayne says in the end and what right. i take that to mean and i don't have answers but what i take that to mean is he was designed to do what Batman does. And by observing Batman and being literally in Batman's shoes, the robot gained a sense of morality, even mm-hmm. though that's not what Hardak wanted. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. I love that stuff. And I almost wish this could be like, a, I would love to see like a, a mini series in a comic of this. Like what does the Batman robot do with himself in all of this, you know? Yeah, definitely. No, that stuff is, that stuff is great. I, Cause my actually, the thing I was thinking when it was over was, I would. I wish that the uh, Hardak Batman hadn't died, mm-hmm. and that it just sort of like, yeah, uh, sort of Tom Reichert itself, where it was. Uh, <laughs> it, it was still around, but it was kind of keeping a low profile. So at some point, you come back to that character, and it's like it's this robot who's like got his chest blown open, so he can't really show off. He yeah. can't really, you know, he's got to wear a lot of shirts, and uh, he he, but he also looks like Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe his memory chip is busted and, you know, how, what does that story look like? And, oh, yeah. You know, somebody, if he's do, living living homeless in Gotham City or something, and people yeah. are like, holy shit, Bruce Wayne's living under a bridge. You could totally take that in so many different directions, you know? Or like, like nope. you know, yeah, let's say he's like, he's existing homeless under a bridge and then, uh, I don't know, Rupert Thorne or some high level uh, competitor for Wayne Enterprises finds this thing and is mm-hmm. like, you know... We could probably use this to take over Wayne Enterprise, you know. So then they're right. they're running this thing against Bat, you know. That, I think that would be a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah, I would take the uh, consciousness of Batman and put it in a car and turn it into Kit, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and then you could have Batman in the Batmobile driving next to robot Bat car. 
<laughs> or maybe that's a dumb idea. Now that I said it out loud, you, you just you just want as many uh, as many options for Batman to not have to leave the house. Is that that you can find? Whether it's just, drones or putting his brain into a talking car. No, I like him in a car. <laughs> but, you just don't sitting, want him to have to do anything. But definitely sitting down while he's doing all of this. <laughs> Speaking of that, I uh, I did a cover for a uh, Star Trek book uh, a couple years ago that was like an alternate reality thing, and it was like it was this alternate uh, version of Star uh, the Star Trek universe where the Romulans had won all the wars and stuff, yeah. and so the TNG cast were all it was kind of like a Mad Max sort of post apocalypse thing, mm-hmm. and the coolest thing about it was that um, Jordy had this would carried around with him the severed head of Data. And he had data uh, hardwired into his own brain, so he was using data as eyeballs. That's great. Yeah, and so there's a scene where he's driving a dune buggy, and he's got data's head on the dashboard. Yeah, and he's you get the wires coming back into Jordy's head, so he can see while he's driving. It's pretty great. You know, there are so many iterations of data's head doing things in the entire mm-hmm. series and in the movies. Like how many times have they found a weird data head in the sand and they have to explain yeah, away like which version of this, is this like a time travel data head or yeah. <laughs> is they this really, another robot? They really went from data is unique in the universe to, <laughs> we just keep finding pieces of them all over the place. Let's give, them, let's give them a planet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. What would you I like how this podcast is like a springboard to complain about other sci-fi shows, mainly it's Star complaining. Trek. It's not complaining. It's just talking about. There's a difference. I know, I know. We, uh, we if, complain. This was, if this was complaining about stuff, I would shut it down because I hate that. We complain in an academic professorial style. Yeah, there Which we makes go. it sound like, uh, yeah, criticism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We, we, we use our place in uh, creative media to uh, cover all of the stupid gripes we have about stuff. Yeah. I mean, maybe if we ranted about this series, we'd get more YouTube followers because I feel like the outrage dollar is more powerful than the uh, than what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, you don't want that, though. No, I don't. Of course, I yeah, don't. That's... <laughs> Plus, what am but I, you're I right. You are 100% right. But that's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, even labeling an episode with an outrage is just as clickbait. is It's so stupid how well that works, you know? Like, I wish there yeah. was a way to crack down on it because it just it hurts the conversation, you know? Like, it's not okay for me to not like Star Wars now because people get all riled up. Like, they think I'm going to start ranting like some dumb YouTube video when right. I actually have legit reasons why I, I think it could be better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just, you know, it, it, gets your, it, gets your, uh, it, it gets your ire up before you even watch the video. You know, you see a, a clickbait headline that you either 100 yeah. percent agree with or you 100 percent right. don't agree with and then you have to see what this idiot says that you don't agree with or what this person you probably think is not smart <laughs> is saying that agrees with you so i don't think the human brains are capable of understanding twitter ever i think yeah. we're trying to get better at it but i just don't think we're ever going to get around this get our heads yeah. around this yeah yeah that one uh that's a tough one yeah <laughs> anyway uh, what would you what would you draw in this episode or, oh, or change? Oh, um, man, I had Alfred in a gas mask. It was pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. Or a Batman with uh, circuitry coming out of his abs would be a nice mm-hmm. cover. How about you? Um, I loved the scene where Robot Batman just pulls his whole face off. Yeah. Like a mask. Like he just peels it up over his face, which that's another thing where I was like, I can't believe they did that in a cartoon for kids. Yeah. There's no yeah. blood or anything, but it's still pretty jarring <laughs> to see someone just pull their own face. Yeah. Off. This episode, honestly, this is the one that I think is the roughest if you're a young kid. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I was watching it today and I was like, this is yeah. intense. Yeah. Because like they can't show blood at all. Mm-hmm. But there's an episode where Clayface is literally melting in a subway Right. With his head smashed against the glass. Like, that just seems way more violent than a little bit of blood on someone's lip. Or oh, this robot ripping his face off. But according to the t- this, the red tape, it's like, no, he's a robot. You can do that. It's not really flesh. It's plastic. Yeah. The kids can see it. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's the history of, of, all, of, you know, media censorship, like movies and TV, yeah. you know, from day one, where it's like, you know, we really think that this is too graphic cut it back so you can't see what's happening and that ends up a lot of times being even more terrifying oh yeah i mean jaws would not have been scary if you could see the shark (laughs) oh definitely yeah um 
But yeah, I would I would do I would probably draw him peeling his own face off. But I also I also really like the idea of drawing a ba- a robot Batman that is um, continuously falling apart. Mm. Whether it's you know you know skin pieces falling off or or just yeah. he's breaking down. I think mm-hmm. I would probably if I got a chance to do hard act, I would probably do that second story where it's like he's still out there and he still exists, but yeah. he's he's falling apart. So whatever he's doing yeah. is going to be his last gasp before he just falls to pieces. Yeah, like a whole. I'd like to see an epilogue where he is literally a Batman living on the streets, falling apart, and he knows he doesn't have a lot of time left, and he chooses to act like Batman. And Bat, the real Batman, finds that someone is solving crimes in a very bat-like yeah. fashion. And he's like, "Wait a minute, that guy's still out there," you know? Yeah, but he's also so, like punching through walls to do it. <laughs> yeah, because he's got that robot strength. Yeah, and at the end, he's basically like, what's his face from Aliens? Just like a torso and an arm crawling through alleyways. Just like, come back here. Give back the money. (laughs) Yeah. Don't take uh, her purse. um, Have you ever seen Reanimator? No, but it's it's on my list. Yeah, it's a great one. There's the the sequel, Bride of Reanimator. They're they're building this, uh, the ideal woman out of pieces of, of other... Uh, yeah, you know, like that, the legs of a ballerina and the hands of a. a yeah, I mean, who hasn't had that thought? Model? Sure. <laughs> um, and the 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 big climactic scene at the end is when the uh, the the body comes to life and and realizes what she is and that she shouldn't exist. And mm-hmm. as she's freaking out, all of her stitching like starts popping loose. Yeah. And it ends with her reaching into her own chest, pulling out her own heart, and then falling apart. And it's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. (laughs) And it's like that kind of thing I find. I would probably end the story like that, where it would be like Hardak reaches in to his chest for his whatever cortex and pulls it out to hand it to Batman. And at that point, he just like falls to pieces. Well, you the way that it ended, Hardak just freaks out and starts punching the the mainframe of the computer and it explodes. You could have had him... um, like explode and disappear or like upload himself before it explodes or he melts yeah. to this weird mutant thing. Um, yeah, you could have gone any way with that. And even still, like if they revived him, I could see him kind of surviving and uploading himself into a back or something like that, you know? He's yeah. comic book science. Yeah. Speaking of comic book science, before we go, I wanted to mention, but <laughs> I could not stop laughing when they showed how Batman survived that fall into the chasm, where he oh. just happened to grab on a pipe that was sticking <laughs> yeah. out of the wall. I had that note too. What the fuck is he grabbing on? It's a pipe sticking yeah. out of the wall with a flashlight pointing up. Yeah, it's like <laughs> this ca- this chasm of like rock bat cave wall yeah. just has like a water pipe sticking out of the side <laughs> of it. Like he measured wrong when he was putting in the plumbing for the bat cave. It's the only thing jutting out yeah, of the wall Yeah, there's nothing else a around. Miles. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, you know, it's got a flashlight on it. He had a sword, too. Like, I thought he'd be hanging from the sword. He jammed it into a crevice and managed to stop himself from falling or something. Yeah, that would make sense. Maybe it was a sword with a I flashlight so. attached to it. <laughs> with a flashlight on it. <laughs> a tactical sword. Yeah. I do think it's funny that uh, the end, the fight scene was a very low-tech, swashbuckling fight scene. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, you know the, how I love swords, but... Uh, I do, yes. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think uh, I think. Oh, what's uh, how would you rate this one? Uh, I'm gonna go four on this. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a. I think it's great. I don't quite think it's an all timer. No, but I think it's like just below. Yeah, being this one be, that you come back to all the time. If I had to have a top five of unappreciated episodes, this would be on that top five. Yeah, yeah I think so too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I actually. Uh, I hadn't watched this one in forever, and I, uh, you know, I love the the animated series toys that that DC has been putting out the last few years. Oh uh, yeah, and yeah. they have the the busted up Hardak Terminator Batman. Oh man, you got to get that one. Yeah, it's a cool looking figure, but I was like, eh, I mean, I don't really have any attachment to that story. But after watching this, I was like, I yeah. think I might want to get that because that's pretty rad. What if it had the ability? Remember the toy from T two where you could uh, dip the uh, eight. T eight that hundred into flesh colored oh, casing yeah. and then slowly rip it off his his face. I had that. It was uh, uh, I I asked my parents. <laughs> I begged my parents for that for a long time, and then I got it and I used it once because it was a pain <laughs> in the ass to play with. So <laughs> I can see how that would be your type of toy. I I did not like messy toys at all. 
I don't yeah. think you and I would have been good friends when we were really young. <laughs> Plus, I was older than you, and I didn't like hanging out with kids. Yeah, yeah, even though that's the only people that were around for you to hang out with. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, for a guy who got a we, for two guys who have careers in comic books, we can't claim that we're really looking to hang out with the mature people of society. No, no, just young <laughs> children is what we're looking for. Anyway, <laughs> let's get a van. <laughs> I, anyway, I, you can call me Awesome Carl. Yeah, I'm Awesome Carl. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, thanks for listening. If you like us, you give us a rating and review on iTunes. Uh, that would be amazing. And uh, next time, we got a big one coming up. We're going to be doing um, the first appearance of Ra's al Ghul, or Ra's al Ghul, depending on how you, how you choose to say it, which is uh, Demon's Quest Part 1 and Part 2. Oh, boy. So uh, thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. See you.